This video will look at configuring workspace search in ServiceNow. So first, let's look at what is the point of workspace search. Well, I'm in ServiceNow, and uh, traditionally, if I want to do a search, I could do the global search. So let's say I search something like email, and it will bring up uh, all the records that are configured uh, to be searched for, uh, or all the tables that are configured to be searched. And if I click on one of them, it brings me to the platform or classic or core UI view, depending on how you want to call it. Um, so this is obviously, if you have your users in a workspace, this is not desirable because we don't want them to uh, relapse into looking at things in core UI. We want them to stay in workspace. So the solution to that is the workspace search. So if I go into a workspace, say service operations workspace, and I do the same search, uh, you can see right now the, the default goes to search uh, service operations workspace instead of global. So there's this little drop down. You can you know, switch back to global or search in any of the individual workspaces. So now if I search email and I get the same results page, but when I click on it, uh, now it sends me to the record in uh, Service Operations Workspace. Um, so let's take a look at now how we configure this um, search so that when we punch this in and we see the results, how do we put the tables in there that it's going to search? And how can we configure the different columns that appear uh, in the search results? So the first thing we're going to do is go to um, search applications. And here it's going to give us a list of all the different um, applications or kind of places where we can use the search. So here we're going to go to uh, service operations workspace search config. OK, so now we're in here. And uh, we can see we can select a search engine. Now, uh, because this is a, a PDI, we don't have the possibility of uh, search of uh, configuring AI search or of selecting AI search for this uh, particular application configuration. But if you're in a, uh, a non-PDI or something that is configured with that, you said there's a little note up here about uh, the AI search is available to supported now platform applications. Uh, so on the PDI, it's not available. Um, anyway, we're looking at uh, the, I think the out of the box is the Zing configuration. So we're going to use that. And then so down here, we have all of our different uh, search sources that are associated with this uh, application, with the service operations workspace search config. So we can see uh, the source, the search source, and the order uh, that it goes in. So let's go take a look at uh, where it gets, because this is a many-to-many -many table. And let's go take a look at uh, where it's getting these uh, search sources from. So for that, you can just type in uh, search source, I think. Yeah, Workspace Experience Administration Search Sources. And if we go to something like Incidents, uh, uh, yeah, this record is in the global. Right, so here we are pulling up um, all incidents. Uh, there's no condition set. So let's go ahead and set a condition just to see how it reacts. And let's say we only want to search. Uh, let's really narrow it down so that we uh, can see a, see a difference in the results. So let's say we only want uh, incidents where the caller is able to tutor. And I'm not even sure that there are any incidents with that criteria. Uh, we'll update that. And now we'll do this again. And so I'm getting a cache result here. Uh, well, first of all, let's let's see. Uh, I know I'm getting a cache result, but let's see if there are any actually, actually any incidents for Able Tutor just to. Okay, he doesn't have any incidents or any active incidents anyway. OK, so we should get no results, uh, no matter what we put in here. Uh, so I have a bunch of cached stuff. OK, and I'm still getting some. Oh, no, I'm not. See, this is change requests. 
So, uh, but let's punch in something. Let's find an incident and search for it. Uh, how about down? That's a good search. So we want to go back to um, service operations workspace and we'll do down and we're getting nothing. So that is the uh, intended behavior. Um, so that's how you can modify your uh, different search results. Go back to search sources. Sometimes when you make changes in here, uh, you actually have to do a cache.do to uh, see the effects of it. Uh, but in this case, it was, uh, it was okay. Okay, so we're gonna take this result off, uh, take this condition off and go back to searching for uh, all incidents. And uh, while we're in here, of course, you can also lock these down by uh, roles and by groups if you want. And you can also have multiple uh, search sources on the same table with different conditions. Maybe that points to different roles or groups. Um, so you can get kind of granular there in the way it's configured. Okay, so we went back to searching all incidents and um, Search down. Okay, good. Now we're back to uh, searching all incidents with uh, down in it. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at how we can configure the um, columns that appear here. Um, so you see this is the short description up here. Uh, these are the uh, a bunch of columns, and then this is the description field on the bottom. Uh, there is a very good documentation page on this. I'll punch it up over here and I'll put the link in the description. Uh, this kind of tells you everything you need to know about uh, configuring these uh, res results page. And I'll just go through it now. Um, so the trick here is if we go to our incidents page, or incidents list, rather. Uh, you go to the view, there's a view called text underscore search. Uh, so this is the view that the results, that the search results page will use uh, if it exists. If the text underscore search uh, view does not exist, then it will use the default view and uh, try to uh, figure out these uh, different uh, fields from there. Um, so the first thing, we saw is the uh, title. So the title, it gets, um, I should really punch up two so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so uh, this is the title here. SAP Financial Accounting Application appears to be down. So it grabs the title from the first text field that it sees that is not the number. Uh, so in this case, it's the uh, short description field is the first text field that is not the number. Uh, after that, it's going to just take whatever, um, in, in terms of the columns, number, open, caller, etc. It's going to take whatever you have in the uh, in the rest of this uh, list view. So number, open, caller, etc. And then for the main uh, text field, I forget what they, I think they have a name for that, uh, description. <laughs> they call that the description field. And uh, here it says uh, the global search uses the first string field in the table's text search list that is not the title and is over 100 characters in length. So in this case, uh, it already used the short description as the title, so it's going to skip that. And it's going to say, oh, okay, well, here's the next text field, it's description. Uh, and it will use that in there. So if you wanted to, I don't know, for example, flip these around. I mean, most of the time, this is going to be what you want. Uh, short description as the title and description as the description. But you could uh, flip these around and uh, then you will see a difference in the... Let's do that just for fun. Uh, let's see if this is in global. So we'll flip these, put the description as the title. Now, will it take effect right away? Let's... Uh... 
Let's see, can I do a refresh like that? Yes, it did. Uh, so the short description is now down here, and the description is now up here. So let's flip those back. Okay, so the last thing uh, we can take a look at is if we go back to our search applications and we find our service operations workspace search config, there's a little uh, annotation here telling us about this other table, sys aw global search config. So we can go into there. Okay, and we'll find uh, the SOW search configuration. We'll go in there. So this has some configurations for the uh, search history. Um, how many recent items you want to keep, how many recent terms you want to keep. So that is uh, these are the recent, oops, it's kind of disappearing on me. This is the recent uh, terms, I think, and this is the recent items. Uh, so it's the default is five of each of those. Um, and then the uh, tab overview items per section and then uh, drill down items per page. So tab items per section is, uh, we should really find something with more than 10, but uh, tab items per section is here. Uh, so if there are 11 incidents that match, and I think if I do something like uh, email, I think there are 11, yeah. So it's gonna give you the first 10 of the 11 on this, uh, on this section. Right, and then it'll go on to the next uh, table that's listed in there. Um, and then if I click on view uh, all tasks incidents, that this is the next setting. So there are 11 results, and I think it's going to give me all 11 on the page. Yeah, showing 1 through 11 of 11. Um, but if I were to move this to a tab drill down items per page, if I were to move that to 10, for example, then you would only see 10 on one page, and you'd, uh, yeah, uh, down here there's a page uh, flipper. So you can go to the next page, and the, the 11th one would be on the next page. Uh, so that is um, also configurable. Um, I think that about covers it. I guess the only other thing is, if I go back to search applications, and uh, this is probably obvious, but I didn't mention it before, um, the order field determines uh, the order that the search results appear. There we go. If that, uh, so incidents is on top, and then problems, and then uh, users. Let's see if I'm lying here. Yeah, incidents, uh, and then there were no change requests or change tests, and then problems, and then uh, users. So it'll go down there. So that is an overview of configuring the workspace search in ServiceNow.